Hi, today I'm in the greenhouse and I want to talk about the care of the fiddly ficus or ficus lorata. And what's um, important to know is that this plant likes a lot of bright indirect light. You don't want to give it direct light because it actually can sunburn the leaves, these big gorgeous tropical leaves. It is a tropical plant, so it likes um, a lot of sun. So that's usually a specification is to make sure you have enough light in your house. Um, and once you figure that out, the other thing is you want to know how to figure out how often it needs to be watered. So a couple of indicators are you can do your method of just sticking your finger deep down into the soil. And if it feels moist to the touch, let it go another few days. Um, if it seems really dry and crumbly and when you pull it out there's no soil on your hand, this is a good indicator to go ahead and water it. And we also have a moisture meter, an inexpensive device, and the indicator will let you know by moving on the, the needle how dry it is. So you want to check in three different locations, especially in a larger plant, to get an accurate read on the dryness of the soil. Once you've determined that it needs to be watered, uh, use um, a proper watering gallon uh, such as this here. Um, and you want to water all the way around the whole diameter of the plant. Now down below I actually have it sitting in a clear saucer right now because you want it to capture um, the water as it drains in. You want the water to actually run through and sit in the saucer for at least 24 hours. That's what's recommended because this plant actually will pull up water from the saucer and drink from the bottom. If you find that after a couple of hours it's already pulled up all the water that's in the saucer, go ahead and add more water. That plant is still pretty dry and it needs to have more water. Now you can see I've actually um, emptied this whole gallon into it and the water finally is coming through the saucer which is good. After 24 hours it's very important that you remove any standing water in the saucer just with a towel or some paper towels. Make sure there's nothing sitting in there because what can happen you end up problems with root rot and that's not a good thing. Then the leaves begin to show brown spots on the leaves such as this. So the other thing um, you want to do to make sure you're properly caring for your fiddle leaf is fertilizing. And we do that in the spring and the summer months when the plant is actively growing and not during the fall or winter months. You can just use an organic product such as fish emulsion or a basic house plant food such as Schultz. This is a, a very convenient way. You just go ahead and with the dropper just add it to the water in your watering can and then just go ahead and fertilize your plant about every other week during the growing season. It's a very diluted form on the organics and even this um, so you don't have to worry about over fertilizing it. And occasionally what you also want to do is to clean the leaves of your fiddle leaf just by taking a damp towel and supporting it with your other hand and just go over the fiddle leaf. And while you're doing all this cleaning, you want to kind of look on the undersides of the leaves and look for mealybug. It's a soft insect, kind of white and cottony, and it likes to hide on the undersides or in the crevices of the plant. And it's a good time to kind of look for any insects at all that you may see. If you do um, see something, you can certainly use this organic product called neem oil. It takes care of any insects or fungus. And again, you're just kind of spraying it on the underside of the plant because that's typically where they hide or on the, um, the stem of the plant itself. So we've kind of covered the basics, which is the watering, providing enough light, general cleaning of the plant every couple of months if it gets dust on there, and then occasionally checking for insects. It's not finicky in terms of house temperatures. It doesn't require a very humid um, conditions in the house. So this plant will be perfectly fine, live for many years, providing you've got all the right conditions.